everyone. In this video, we are showcasing a presentation I did at the University of Utrecht here in the Netherlands. Uh, this presentation was about Python and the role it has within the financial industry, open source, and of course, OpenBB and how we are leveraging the use of Python, finance, and open source in our software. Enjoy. And I will tell you something about how Python is uh, used in the in the financial industry. Uh, what I've seen so far when I look at other firms and I look at what well, how my friends use it and especially how I use it myself. Um, let's start with a brief introduction about myself. Uh, I've done a Bachelor of Economics uh, in Groningen um, and I did a Master of Banking and Finance here. Uh, I've done CFA level one and then decided I didn't like the way it's structured. Uh, so I'm now doing a postmaster, which is a, kind of a Dutch uh, master list, which I'm almost done with. Um, and because of my passion for programming, I spent a lot of time already uh, doing it. Uh, I landed my first job at PTGM as an AOM advisor. Basically what that is, is you forecast for the next 15 years um, what can happen for a pension fund. So PTGM manages one of the largest pension funds here in the Netherlands. They, it's around 300 billion they manage. And what we did, or what my job was really, was uh, look at the next 15 years, what will inflation do, what will interest rates do, how do correlations between asset classes change over time. And given that, we would give advice saying, hey, maybe you should change your asset allocation, maybe you should change um, how you're hedging your interest rate risks and whatnot. Um, it was quite technical. I actually worked with uh, a lot of econometricians, statisticians, uh, physicists, um, well, I was the only finest guy. Uh, as you can imagine, they had a much better understanding on the quantitative stuff. I mean, in the end, finance people, they have a, I find a decent understanding about the math behind all of the models, but they really knew, knew it well. But because I had such a head start in Python, also because of courses like these, um, I landed that job because I, uh, my competitors for the job were all econometricians and they still picked me. So that says something about Pythonist. Um, and I currently work with OpenBB and I will get to that later. Uh, first, I want to show you uh, some jobs that I found on LinkedIn that uh, are about finance and mention uh, Python. Uh, it's quite easy to get this list because there are so many jobs that uh, require some sort of Python knowledge nowadays. Um, you see it even as an equity analyst or as a trader, you need to be at least a little bit proficient in Python. Uh, so it's either it's a requirement here or it's actually a plus. Uh, and having that kind of skill is just really valuable because you will notice uh, that there's so much data in the financial industry that you cannot just use Excel for that. Um, or you use proprietary software, but that's like really, really expensive. Well, it's not that difficult if you just know how to program a little bit. Um, and currently, you guys are still well, very new to Python, so I can imagine that was the, the same question I had at the start. Why wouldn't I just use Excel for this? Because if you have like very small data sets, uh, why not? Um, Python is then not as good as Excel, I'd say. Um, but as soon as you start working with larger data sets, which you will see a lot in the industry, like uh, order books of a large firm, and they make hundreds of trades every single day. Um, that's all kind of rows in Excel. And then if you look at 10 years, then you would have massive uh, amounts of, of data. If you want to make any sense of that um, for portfolio attribution, optimization, or whatnot, you need to use a programming language. And that is really where Python really shines. Um, also, when it comes to complicated calculations, uh, you guys have investment management right now, I believe, from the currency. If you got the uh, efficient frontier, the Marco Markowitz theory, that's currently, you probably get exercises from like one or two or four companies where you need to optimize for their weights. Um, in the real world, you have a couple of thousands and you can't just do that in Excel or you can't just write that down, it doesn't make sense because there's so many uh, correlations between those assets in play. Um, and that's really where programming just shines uh, because there are, for example, there is already software designed for Python um, that does all of that for you. And that's the exact same thing with my, uh, my previous job at PGM, uh, ARM modeling, 
the entire forecasting we did was just one large Python model. So um, the fact I had that skill was one of, yeah was a big reason why I got hired over there because they saw, hey, this guy can model well. That's exactly what we need right now. Um, and lastly, not reinventing the wheel. I think a big one here is discounted cash flow analysis within banks. Uh, if you want to go for uh, m and uh, I wouldn't suggest doing that, but if you want to go for m and um, you're going to do a lot of DCF calculations. And each bank has their own Excel sheet for these DCFs, but in the end, it's constantly the same calculation because yeah, the, the theory doesn't change. Um, and with Python, you can really just program it yourself and then just use it everywhere um, instead of needing to create a new Excel every single time. Uh, it's it's more versatile in that sense. It's it's easier to 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 automate uh, manual tasks. Uh, there's so much more of uh, other things that Python is really good at, but that's a bit too technical for now. Um, so yeah, I want to tell you something about why I decided to spend all the time uh, learning Python because I started like really early when Casper was still developing the course for the first time. I already sent him an email, how does Python work? Can you send me some exercises? I want to try this. Um, simply because I saw that jobs ask for Python experience um, and the combination of uh, knowing both finance and Python is simply rare. You either are really good at finance or you got some IT guy that is really good at Python. But that combination is just something you don't see often. Well, it is really something really great to have, uh, that combination. So I, in essence, I spent every single project I did in the masters, I did in Python. So my entire thesis was written in Python, uh, all the FinTech projects, everything. Uh, and I completely abandoned Stata. I have no clue how Stata works because mm -hmm. I spent zero time on it because I realized Stata is not used outside of universities. That's simply the truth. There's no firm that uses that software. Also because it's, for students it's cheap, but for the industry it's expensive. And then you have alternatives like Python that can also do it for you. And I will show something about it later. Um, so that's why I spent a couple hundred hours, I think, I spent my entire Christmas break uh, making a uh, Python work for me. I'm sure it was the best. Yeah, I think it was a good time back then, but it was a little bit less fun for the family, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I landed my job at PDGM, but I also landed my job at OpenDB um, because of my experience and really what uh, what, what this company is trying to do is create an open source alternative to Bloomberg. Um, and basically what open source is, is that you can view the entire source code. So you can just see how everything is programmed and making it fully transparent. And so you can just see how we program sharp ratios, how we do anything you would want to see. And you can always alter it yourself. It's like a Wikipedia that's also open source. Is that the end? But because they saw the value in me for knowing a lot about investments in Python, that combination was just something they were they were really uh, big on because they could hire uh, Python engineers quite easily, but not the ones that actually had financial experience. Because it's one thing that you can program well, but it's another thing that you actually know how the formulas work and what makes sense. Um, because in the end, yeah, finance is not an exact science. So it's not that if a company has a certain sharp ratio, then it's better than the other because there's so many other things in play. You don't know what the future holds, so that's a difference. Um, yeah, and I just want to show you some examples of what uh, this software can do. And yeah, I'm not trying to promote this too much, but I mostly want to show you uh, because this project is fully created in Python, what you can actually do with Python um, and why it makes sense to use in Python and not to do it in Excel or and buy software for it. For example, uh, DCF, what I mentioned earlier, uh, discounted cash flow analysis. Uh, the Excel you see in the back is completely created by Python itself. So there is just a script created uh, um, that automatically generates this Excel. So it collects data, it uh, parses the data, it applies Pharma and Friends to factor model, 
uh, it has a quote, a ratio in it, and then it just dumps everything to Excel um, where there are packages, there are ways to make the format also look nice, and that's exactly what you see over here. Um, yeah, this is something that you can automate, and we got a lot of feedback on this as well, that, hey, uh, we're currently doing this manually at banks, and you can also do it this way. Uh, I think that's quite impressive um, way of automation already. Uh, and you can extend that further by, for example, macroeconomic data. Um, later on in this course, you will learn something about APIs. Really what an API is, is uh, you make a connection to some sort of database. Uh, for example, a lot of data comes from European, European Central Bank um, or, or the Fed or whatever. Uh, you can just collect the data in Python and do something with it. So you've got unemployment rates, treasury rates, yield curves, big Mac index, of course. Uh, that's all stuff that you can just collect and then uh, work with in Python. Um, and what I mentioned earlier about the order book, uh, Python is good at parsing all of this data. So for example, I have some graphs that uh, do calculations regarding um, your portfolio. So you made certain trades. How does it hold up? Or what are the maximum drawdowns? And how does it hold up to some sort of benchmark you've set? Uh, because in the end, if you're a portfolio manager, you want to show uh, to your uh, yeah, to your managers that you actually are worth um, having in the team. Because if the active investing part does not exceed uh, that of the benchmark, you might as well put everything in the benchmark. Uh, and that's exactly what what uh, what we mentioned really big on. So this kind of information is really important to them. Well, you can quite easily uh, parse all of that information via Python as well. Um, yeah, I want to say something shortly about open source. Um, on a platform named GitHub, which is where all the open source projects reside, uh, <laughs> including Pandas, which you will probably learn uh, something of next week or the upcoming weeks. Um, this is like, if it's completely open source, you can just view everything how it is coded. So what you can see over here is basically uh, the exact structure, how the package is defended. And that's the same with basically anything. Uh, um, there are packages from Google or Facebook also on here. You can just see how the website is designed, if you understand it, of course. I mean, this is really complicated code, but it's just, it is completely transparent. And that's actually a big part of open source, what makes it so valuable. Um, similar to Wikipedia, um, you can almost guarantee that what's coded is correct. Because there are so many people that look at it, at some point, yeah, the, the, the the chance of there being a mistake is pretty low, and that's something that you can expect in closed source software where you can't see how it is created. Um, but because of open source, we also have a lot of packages uh, like Pandas, which you will learn about later, um, that have already implemented a lot of the financial theory. So for example, packages like Pi Portfolio Opt and Risfolio Lib are packages that um, done all the mathematical calculations regarding portfolio optimization. So everything regarding efficient frontier, macro weeds, um, advanced models like uh, nested cluster options, risk parity, um, black litterman, well, probably not in much steel, but all of those uh, all of those things are already incorporated in Python. So you can actually just call that, connect to your order book, and let the, the thing optimize for a maximum uh, sharp ratio, minimizing the risk or whatever you would like. And that's actually quite impressive because there are it's also software out there where you pay a couple thousand a month to do just this. And it's being open source right now. So it's a big trend in the financial industry where people ask themselves, why are we constantly either paying for this or recreating it if it already exists? So this is an example. Um, that continues with uh, econometrics. Like I said, I didn't spend any time learning stata. That was because of this. Um, stats models and linear models already uh, have all the, uh, the regression techniques in there as well. It's basically the same as stata. Um, and I figured I might as well spend the time learning how those packages work 
um, and getting better at Python at the same time, or just at any time using Stata if I don't uh, apply any of that knowledge as soon as I leave the university. Um, I still want to say that Stata is great software, but it's only great software if you want to stay, if you want to become an academic, because then you will be using it all the time probably. But as soon as you leave uh, university, Stata is not something that's used in the institute. I had an interview one, uh, one month ago with a company and with uh, two recruiters, and when I told them that I, I know to run uh, Stata, the first one uh, he didn't know him, and the second one uh, was laughing. It was like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and I was thinking, okay, I have to delete it from my CV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's simply, uh, it's also the thing because as soon as you, uh, as a student, it's, it's cheap, or for university, it's cheap. The state is quite expensive for, uh, for the industry, and you have Python that's free. So there's almost no reason for anyone to invest in Stata, especially because the amount of actual research that you do is not, not your entire, uh, is not what you focus on mostly, and it makes no sense to use Stata. And that's why I spend all the time learning Python for that matter. Um, it's up to you if, what you do with it. Of course, Stata is still quite easy to use if you just want to focus on statistical research, but it helped me a lot in becoming more proficient uh, with the language. So that's something you can do already. Um, and just another little example, uh, I think most of you probably know of Yahoo Finance. There is also a package called Y Finance where you can just collect all of the data uh, from that website uh, directly into Python and use it for whatever analysis you want to do. And um, you guys will get to that later, but you can do for loops over uh, a bunch of tickers. So a ticker is uh, like TSLA is Tesla. Um, if you create like a large list of let's say 200 uh, of those tickers, you can, in a matter of seconds, you can get all the financial statements uh, from all of those companies, uh, like you can see over there. Uh, yeah, that's really where Python shines. So the automation and the speed where, where when you can do that way, instead of needing to export all of that information to Excel. And I think that's my story.